should you screen for diabetes? In this video, we will discuss 10 factors that predisposes you to diabetes. Watch out! Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ivan Kudal. I am an internist and an endocrinologist. So here in this channel, we try to educate people with diabetes, thyroid, and other endocrine hormonal diseases that uh, help them to empower themselves in treating patients with these kinds of diseases. If you're new to this channel, thank you for visiting. If you've been here before, thank you for being part of our community. Hopefully, you'll learn something new. Let's start the video. 410 above. So, bakit nga ba 410 above? Kasi before year 2008, our local endocrinologist did a survey. So, tinawag nilang National Nutrition Health Survey. They showed that the prevalence of diabetes is around 5.6 to 5.8. So, papagalit mo, mga boss nito. Around that number. No? Uh, ibig sabihin, yun yung chances na yung buong population ng Pilipinas merong diabetes. Now, uh, when they did that study, around uh, pag mga age na sila ng mga 40 and above, so ibig sabihin yung 40 and above na hit nila, mas tumataas po yung kanilang chances of having a diabetes. So, yun yung pinaka-reason kung bakit 40 and above. Now, some of the uh, other guidelines shows that 45, 50, but pero sa atin, uh, as a Filipino, mas maganda sana na when you are 14 above, pacheck na po kayo. So, screen for diabetes na. Okay? IFG and IGT. IFG meaning impaired fasting glucose and IGT meaning impaired glucose tolerance. So, kinukuha po to via the um, venipuncture. So, check nila yung fasting blood sugar or small or yung sugar mo after kang uminom ng matamis. Actually, sa mga bundis, pinapagawa po yun eh. Anyway, hindi po kayo diabetic at of this time, but ikaw ay tinatawag na pre-diabetic. Remember, pre-diabetes, pwede pa po kayo maging normal. However, pag nandun pa na sa diabetic, medyo mahirap na pag i-normalize yun. So, ganun pa man, pre-diabetes itself is the um, highest risk factor, if not the most medyo binabantayan namin because uh, yun nga, sabi ko kanina, ito yung mataas yung chance na pag ikaw ay pre-diabetic over your lifetime, maaari ka na magka-diabetes. So, always screen 2, 3, every that time of the year, papacheck po kayo kung magkakaroon na kayo. Okay? GDM, gestational diabetes, or ibig sabihin, diabetes ng pagbubuntis. So remember, this diabetes is only temporary. Pag na-deliver nyo na po si baby, natanggal nyo present sa inyong katawan, wala ka ng diabetes. But remember, and when you had GDM, okay, you have 3 to 7 times of risk uh, compared to no, uh, normal people na magkaroon ng diabetes over your lifetime. In other words, around more than 50% na magkakaroon ka ng diabetes. So maraming... Uh, mag-a-argue sa akin dito but ako sinasabi ko po from my patients uh, when you are 50 you are at least 50% chance na magkaroon ng diabetes so remember dapat after your GDM nagpapacheck pa rin po kayo sa inyong endocrinologist okay. PICOS polycystic ovarian syndromes dun sa mga OB friends natin tingin nga pong tulong okay try kong explain po to so PICOS is different from PICO polycystic ovaries is only an ultrasound finding when you say PICOS, may S, may syndrome po yun. Ibig sabihin, may mga signs and symptoms kayo na medyo meron kayong androgen hormones. Ano yung androgen hormones? Hormones na pang lalaki. So, kung ikaw ay babae, meron ka mga bigot na pagkitili dyan or acne marks, acne itself. Ako, dami kong acne eh. Okay, so pag may mga ganun kang signs, most likely, baka meron kang PICOS. Another thing, abnormal uh, menstruation. So, yun yung usually chine-check ng ating mga uh, friendly OBs if you have PCOS or PICO for that matter. So, ano nangyayari pag may PCOS? Pag may PCOS po kasi, meron kang insulin resistance. Ibig sabihin, yung sarili mong insulin kaya berlu. O kaya yung katawan mo doon. Ibig sabihin din nun, yung sugar na dapat pumapasok sa yung katawan, hindi nakakapasok. Leading to increased risk of diabetes. So, technically, dapat kayo, pag meron kayong PCOS, always have to check if you have or you need to screen for diabetes. Overweight. Oh, alam mo na yan eh, di ba? So, usually, pag overweight ka, um, 
may mataas yung risk mo ng diabetes. So, ano nga ba yung overweight? So, compute mo yung BMI mo. Paano mag-compute ng BMI? So, usually, you uh, check your weight in kilograms divided it into your height via meter squared. Usually kasi pag mga um, Asians, mas strict tayo. Pag 23 and above, overweight ka na. 25 and above of that value, you are obese already. Now, hmm, paano ba natin itong masasabi? Okay, example. Ikaw ay 5 foot 5 na lalaki. Yun yung mga usual height natin, eh, di ba? So, technically, dapat mga nasa 65, 67 kilograms lang ang timbang mo. Pag more than that, check, baka overweight ka na. Okay, when you are around 5 foot flat naman na babae, check mo rin yung timbang mo. Pag mga nasa 55 and above ka na, ayun, baka naman din nandun ka sa medyo mas pambigat nating population. So, always check, no? Uh, with your regards to your waist circumference. So, alam na natin yan. Kanina yung overweight. Ngayon yung waist circumference. Ano yung magic number with regards to waist circumference? Sa babae, um, 80 and above. So, anong ibig sabihin ng pag 31 inches, 31.5 inches na yung, yung waist circumference. So, check nyo yung mga, mga pantalon nyo dyan, no? So, yun ay pwede na maging risk for diabetes pag mataas doon. Pag ito naman ay lalaki, mga 90 cm or around 34 inches ang iyong waistline. So, medyo malas na yung mga Pilipino. Eh. Mas mataas kasi yung chances na mata, mataba yung central area natin compared sa peripheral area, yung mga kamay at paa. So, mas mataas din yung chance na mas mataba tayo from this side. Okay? So, always check your waist circumference. Nakala mo, wala lang yan, ha? <laughs> Okay, first degree relatives. Damay-damay lang yan. So, most likely, if your father, your mother, or your siblings, mga kapatid mo may diabetes, most likely, ikaw rin ay magkakaroon ng diabetes. Check always your mom and dad kasi pag, kunyari, less than 45 years old sila magkaroon ng diabetes, medyo ganung age range ka rin magkakaroon ng diabetes in your life. Hmm, paano ka ba ito? Dok, paano yung lola ko or yung nanay ko magkaroon na ng diabetes yung pagtanda nila, mga 80s, 70s na nila. Paano ba masabi ito? Usually kasi, baka dun lang nila nahuhuli na diabetic sila. Pero matagal na pala silang diabetes over time, hindi lang po nila nasi-check. So, always ask your first degree relatives. Sisihin mo sila kung bakit kami diabetes. Sedentary lifestyle. Alam nyo na to katulad ng overweight, weight circumference. This is also a factor na kung bakit kayong kakaroon ng diabetes. Sedentary meaning from our perspective, 1.5 metabolic equivalent. So, ano yung mga ginagawa ng mga yun? So, pag kaupo ka lang, okay, um, nanonood ng TV, makahiga lang, yung mga wala talagang masyadong ginagawa, yun ay chance na magkaroon ka ng diabetes. So, ano ba yung kailangan mong gawin in general para mas malesen itong mga to? So, kailangan kahit pa paano, uh, mas gumalaw-galaw ka, mas pinagpapawisan ka. Doc, question, paano po ba yung mga nagmamap o kaya nagwawalis o kaya naglalaba? pinagpapawisan na po ako nun eh. Exercise na po ba yun? Now, you have to know if your exercise is enough pag nakikita mo bumibilis yung tibok ng puso mo. Pag sa tingin mo, yung paglalabaw mo eh, normal lang, mabagal lang. Ano ba yung normal? Mga 60 to 100 na uh, tibok ng pulso. Pag hindi siya masyado bumibilis, for me, okay, hindi naman ganun ka-effective yung exercise mo. So, yun ang basehan, kumbaga, kung paano natin gagawin na effective na ba yung exercise. Hypertension. So, interconnected po yan. When you have diabetes, you have higher chances of hypertension. When you have hypertension, you have higher chances of diabetes because of the most common complications niya, stroke, heart attack, peripheral vascular disease, yun yung mga um, sugat sa paan, mahirap gumaling, okay? Yun yung mga complications ng hypertension and diabetes pag pinagsama mo. So, check mo po parati yan. So, ano nga ba yung ideal? na blood pressure na tinitignan mo. So, technically, something na mga 140 and below. Okay? Yun yung mga some of our doctors. Pero kung ikaw ay diabetic, mas maganda sana kung nasa 130 and below yung systolic blood pressure mo. Yung unang number lang po, ah, hindi po yung baba. So, possibly some other lectures yan, pero ideally, mas okay na po na yun po yung number. 
Okay, cholesterol. So, tandaan, pag nagpapacheck po kayo ng cholesterol, lipid profile po yung dapat yung pinapagawa. Kasi yung lipid profile, doon makita yung mga iba't ibang klase ng cholesterol components. So, total cholesterol, triglycerides, HDL or good cholesterol, and LDL, bad cholesterol. Mainly, pag diabetic, triglycerides and HDL yung nagiging abnormal. Triglycerides, sobrang taas yung HDL or yung good cholesterol, sobrang baba. So, pag medyo abnormal po yung mga component ng inyong cholesterol levels, okay, yung lipid profile, uh, andun, medyo may chance na mayroon na rin kayong diabetes. So, always check your cholesterol levels. So, ingat sa tabata. Okay, so, something bonus. So, choco na batok. para ko sinasabi sa mga lectures ko. No? So, acanthosis nigricats. Yun yung mga namimikim yung dito yung batok mo or yung dito sa leeg mo or yung sa kilikili mo. Sign po yun kasi ng insulin resistance. So, pag meron kang insulin resistance, katulad yung lecture ko sa PICOS, okay, meron kang insulin, kaya berlo siya sa iyong katawan, okay, so ibig sabihin, hindi rin makapasok yung sugars mo dahil wala nga pakialam yung katawan mo sa, sa sarili mong insulin, leading to increased risk of blood sugar that is high. Leading to So, check nyo parati yung mga likod ng mga kasama nyo dyan. Baka meron silang choco na bato. Ayun, so uh, these are the common risk factors that predisposes you to diabetes. Question, ano nga ba yung may risk factor na meron ka? So, comment mo lang dito sa baba and para magkaalaman na tayo. <laughs> anyway, um, if you have questions and concerns regarding these lectures, just ask us. Okay, and we'll gladly answer your concerns. Okay guys, hopefully you learned something in these short lectures. Okay, remember guys, these are guides and advices and not a replacement for your um, proper medical consultation. In short, please seek medical advice in your friendly neighborhood physician. Ayos ba? Medyo kinayo ko yung linya ngayon, no? Okay guys, that's the end of the lecture. So, thumbs up if may natutunan po kayo. If you want to hear more and learn more regarding these kinds of diseases, so subscribe to our channel and hopefully, uh, mapuloy-tuloy po natin. So, again, I'm Dr. Ivan Pudal and thank you for listening and watching pala. Okay, signing out!